Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the ChessWebsite.com, and today we're in round nine of our coverage of the 2016 Canada's Tournament. Winner of this tournament does go on to face Magnus Carlsen in November for the World Championship. Our competitors today, two of the leaders, Vishyanam playing the white pieces, reigning champion of the Candace tournament, and Levon Aronian playing the black pieces. Levon is in the lead, co-leader with Sergei Kardhyakin, and Vishyanan half a points behind them. A win for either of these players would be huge. Sergei Kardhyakin tied today, so a win would put Vishyanan tied for the leaders, uh, and Levon Aronian, if he were to win, that would put him in sole possession of first place. Both these players have been playing extremely well. Levon Aronian, in my opinion, playing the best in the tournament so far. So without further ado, We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, pawn e4. Always exciting to see Vishinon play pawn e4. Before this tournament, I, I can't remember a time where he was playing pawn e4 this regularly, but uh, maybe in his head, he's already just thinking that he's going to be playing Magnus Carlsen. So he's just getting ready for just tons of e4. He figured he might as well play it himself. But pawn e4, pawn e5, knight f3, knight c6. I think we all kind of expected the Rai Lopez getting into the Birdland defense because that's what we see every single round. But instead, we see something different. We see the Italian game. We see Bishop here to C4. And Levon Aronian responds with Bishop to C5, the quiet game. Uh, generally said the quiet game because there's not too many fireworks that happen in a match that kind of starts like this. Now, Vichy responds with Castle on the King side. And sometimes you may see Knight F6 pawn d4 this is the max lange gambit this is a pretty crazy gambit if you haven't seen it there is a video on the website uh, the just website.com you can kind of check that out uh, they did not opt for this instead after castle on the king side we see pawn d6 pawn d3 which is probably one of the more quieter ways you can actually play the quiet game so neither side so far makes it seem like they want to make a big splash uh Usually when you're playing someone near the top of the table, it's just not worth trying to go for glory when you could just get a draw. They definitely don't want to lose in this position, so they continue. Knight f6, pawn c3, potentially looking for a pawn to d4, opening up the center of the board. Pawn a6, pawn a4, and then bishop back here to a7. Controlling these diagonals is very important. This light square bishop here on c4 starts to attack the square here on f7, which right now is kind of the least defended square for black early on, since the king is the only piece that kind of holds on to it. After castle, that does change. Opposite side of the board, this dark square bishop attacks this pawn here on f2. Uh, so both of these bishops, the light square for white, the dark square for, for black, are definitely the most powerful in the Italian game. So decides to bring it back here to a7. It's going to be attacking uh, this long diagonal for the foreseeable future. Knight a3. Uh, there's no great squares for this knight to come to. It could come to d2 uh, and very easily you know, block this c1 bishop. But once it moves again, it's no longer blocked. But usually when it comes to c4. Can't really come to c4 in this situation, so instead Vishinans decide to go ahead and bring it to a3. Uh, Bishop or Knight back here to e7. Now Knight c2 can start to see him rearranging his pieces a little bit. Uh, knight g6, so kind of move this one from c6 towards the king side of the board. If I come back a little bit, if we look at variations, instead of Knight c6, I almost prefer just castling on the king side. Seeing what Vishyanan comes back with, uh, seeing if he has anything crazy to do here. But I like this knight here on c6. It seems like it's doing a good job. Uh, but Levon Arrayan decided that wasn't worth it. Decided to go ahead and bring it back here to e7. And then after knight c2, then brings it to g6. Uh, bishop to e3. Uh, so... I really like this approach from Vishyanan. He says, hey, your most powerful bishop right now is your dark square bishop. My dark square bishop doesn't really do too much in the Italian game, especially early on. So I'm going to go ahead and exchange that off the board. Uh, so after castle on the king side, uh, we do see the exchange on board. So Vichy does have the better bishop right here. Later on, if we want to see an exchange on board, we could see that rook here to e8, bishop here to e6, or even just queen e7, bishop e6, trying to exchange off those lights for a bishop. That sounds like a logical plan for Levon Aronian. Vichy continues, knight to e3, knight to g4, attacking the knight, queen d2, protecting the knight, 
pawn a5 just extending a little bit on the queen side, making sure that pawn a5 does not happen for Vichy and Nam. Pawn d4 looking to blow up the center of the board, rook back to a8. Then we start to see some exchange on board. So e5, knight recaptures, knight recaptures, knight here to e5, and then bishop back to b3. Does not want to exchange that material off. He really does like his bishop right here. Uh, and then knight to d7. And there's a few options that Vishianan has right now. My favorite option uh, is to be very aggressive. So in my own games, this is kind of how I approach it. Uh, I know my opponents are going to be very different than Levon Aronian, so take that and uh, keep that in mind as I go over this. But uh, I think f4 is a really great way to start to attack. Anytime my opponent retreats a little bit, so knight to d7, blocking off his light square bishop, you can see his pieces are kind of in retreat mode. Rook here on f8 is not doing too much. Rook on a8 really can't get too involved. Uh, we kind of just saw it retreat back already. Uh, the queen's really the only piece that's doing too much right now as far as being able to get involved very very quickly so pawn to f4 starts to immediately put pressure on the king side my bishop is already pointed at the king side uh, i can get my knights quickly involved in any sort of attack and this rook right here allows me to start to push forward now from here we can see rook e8 and that's just threatening this material right here on e4. But that can just be pretty aggressive. Queen to d5. Uh, this is threatening mate right here. You really need to stop a mating threat. So queen e7. Then rook here to e1. So y'all can probably see the queen can't just come here to e4. Because uh, that would be check mate uh, in a few moves right there. So uh, all in all, I think this is a really good way to approach it. There's... Not a lot of great moves that Levon Aronian has to kind of protect against this. Uh, instead, we see a safer move. We see Bishop here, c2, uh, just getting ready to push his b pawn a little bit forward. So after Bishop b2, then Rook e8, and then a pawn f3, just solidifying the pawn chain a little bit. Uh, not as fun, uh, but definitely a, a solid play all in all. Pawn b6, solidifying that pawn chain as well. Uh, and then rook over here to a d1. If you kind of look at it and say, you know, could he just bring his rook over here? He could, but it's one of those where you play your rook to d1. It was protecting the pawn here on a4. And then your opponent plays knight to c5, attacking that pawn on a4. And you kind of ask for your move to be taken back because you really just wish you had moved your other rook over there. So uh, Vishianan decided, let's just go ahead and not take the move back. Let's play rook here to a d1. And then knight to c5 followed by pawn to b4, and then we see the quick retreat of the knight right back here to d7, which seems somewhat odd to me, uh, almost knowing that your opponent's going to be playing pawn to b4 to kind of waste a move right here. But Levon Aronian up until this point seems somewhat lost. Uh, definitely the most I've seen him in this tournament so far. He's kind of dominated pretty much all his opponents. Even when he drew a couple of them in some of the post-game matches, he found some winning combinations that actually would have checkmated his opponent. Uh, so he's at almost a higher level thinking up into this tournament, but he seems just bamboozled by the Italian game. Vishianan seems to be in complete control, uh, although it has been kind of a, a quiet game. Not, nothing too crazy has happened. Levante Ryan seems unsure how to defend correctly, and so all of his pieces are kind of just all right in the center of the board. And he's just kind of waiting for Vishianan to make a move and then just try to defend without making any huge mistakes. Vichy continues Bishop B3. He does still like this long diagonal, but as we talked about, he did want to get that pawn a little bit forward, pawn to B4. Now Knight F6 opening up the door for the light square Bishop to get involved. Queen D4 just threatening the center of the board. Always good to have a very, very forward queen towards the middle and late game. Uh, knights at d5 attacking the queen. We do see an exchange on board. Now this bishop on d5, this is a nice little, nice little outpost. Uh, the rook is forced to move. Rook here a7. And then pawn to b5. This gain space for white. This is really solid. We do have another outpost. We can come up here to c6 even. Start to take away some of the back rank moves that black has. So all of these options really good. Uh, bishop e7 pawn to uh, c4, and then queen e5. And if you kind of look at it and say, well, 
you know, why wouldn't Levon Aronian just go ahead and take right here? It gets kind of awkward after the pawn recaptures. You do have a semi-open file right here on the C file. And Vishianan could just put all of his material just attacking this backward pawn right here on C7. And Levon Aronian just has to spend most of his time just defending this pawn. He doesn't have any great options himself as far as what he should be attacking. Uh, so all in all, this is a pretty tough position for Black to deal with. So he doesn't do that. Instead, he decides to go ahead and come down here, queen to e5, rook to c1, uh, and then we do see an exchange on board. Uh, and then both sides decide, okay, now it's time to go ahead and start getting our kings activated into the game. So king f8, uh, king f2, uh, king e7, pawn pushing forward to f4, king f6, rook c3, now all of a sudden the rook to h3, starting to attack on the king side of the board. Pawn h6, rook g3, attacking the pawn right here. And then rook e7 defending, and then rook very aggressively playing rook to g6, uh, attacking all of these pawns right here. So he could take the pawn, depending on where the rook is, check. Uh, and then both of these would be isolated pawns. He can gobble those up very, very quickly. So definitely, if you kind of look at this, I would say Vishianan has a better position on board. Lavon Aronian decided to go ahead and now take with his bishop here on d5. Uh, and then as you can imagine, you know, how we would recapture we're going to recapture with that pawn. Not nearly as good to capture with our rook right here, uh, or pawn would be even worse, just to go ahead and have this open file available for black to kind of control. Uh, instead, pawn to d5, this is kind of what we were talking about before, opens up the door to really attack this backward pawn here on c7. Anytime you can attack a pawn, you, you want it to be back here on the seventh rank, because that's where you're gonna be putting your rooks anyway. So. That's Vishianan's plan right now. Uh, rook a8, uh, king f3. We do see a double rook here, so both the rooks attacking this pawn right here. Uh, Vishianan has two options. He can try to hold on to this pawn. He does have his rook and his king holding on to this, so playing pawn to g4. This is the approach I probably would have gone with just to see what my opponent does right here. You can really start to put a lot of pressure on the king side. Uh, Vishianan decided... Let's just get crazy here. Let's play king to g4. Let's allow my opponent to go ahead and take material. Uh, and then rook g7, kind of an in-between move. Check, forcing the king to move. And then rook down here to d2. King over here, b8, rook to c2. And you can start to see what Vishianan's been working towards this entire time. Both of his rooks here attacking this pawn here on c7. Now, Levon Aronian, rook to c8, uh, but now black is kind of in that I'm now defending mode instead of just attacking with both of his rooks. White now continues rook a2, wants to make sure he holds on to that pawn on a4. Rook d4, attacking the pawn on d5. And then Vishinon's decided to play king f5. If you're, hey, if you're gonna take my pawn here on d5, I'm gonna start to gobble up some of your material. So rook takes on d5, and then a king takes on f6. So both sides have a pass pawn. White has a pass pawn on the f file, and black has a pass pawn on the d file. So both sides are going to be rushing to make sure that they can get a pass pawn as far up the board as possible, and just put a threat on board. Rook f8, attacking the king. We do see an exchange on board, and then rook to f5, uh, check, then he can start to gobble up that material, so small win right there for black, uh, and then pawn to g3. So this is a very important note. A lot of people make a mistake. They would say, okay, you take my pawn, I'm just going to recapture here on h6, make sure we're even in material, uh, and then I have two pass pawns over here, you have one pass pawn, let's just race it out, but this would be a huge mistake because rook h4, that's check, and you're going to end up losing material on h2, but if you instead look a little bit more and say pawn g3, this does stop the rook from coming here to h4, so very nice calculated uh, move from Vishianan, pawn g3, Rook back here to c4, which I'm not really sure what the move to c4 does. Uh, protects the backward pawn here on c7 that's not really doing anything at all. So I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure Levon Aronian knows exactly what he's doing with this move. It seems somewhat awkward to me. Uh, but we do see the king take here on h6. 
And we start to see the, the push forward. So pawn here to d5, uh, king h5, pawn d4, pawn g4, pawn d3, pawn up here h4, and then rook to d4. The best way to stop a pushed pawn, a passed pawn specifically, is just to get in front of it. So rook here to d2, that stops all the shenanigans. There's no way for black to really deal with this. As soon as the rook moves off this file to maybe come down here and try something crazy, the rook can just take this. And so black just kind of has to wait and see what Vishyanan does. He's going to need to get his king involved because right now he just does not have the material he needs to, to do anything further. So king eight, c8, uh, pawn g5, and now Vishyanan starts to attack. Uh, king d7, king g6, and then rook takes on h4. And this is another one of those where I, I just don't know that this is the best way to go. Uh, he decides to go ahead and give up his only pawn, as we said before. Uh, and he allows Vishinan to have a pushed pawn, uh, a pass pawn here on the G file that he can push forward. And although they are even in material, Black really can't be doing too much with his pawns over here on the queen side. And so he's just now in complete defense mode. But this is a pretty tough defense. He doesn't have his king and his rook connected at all. Uh, and so this rook here can kind of just block off getting the king involved. It can come to F3 can come to e3 and all of a sudden the king can't move it's just this king over here and that's going to be very tough to stop this attack by Vichy Anon so uh, king e8 we first see the rook over here a3 just stopping the attack on a4 uh, then rook over here c4 king g7 getting ready to push forward uh, king d7 push forward g6 Pawn c6, trying a last bit of hope on the queen side, recognizing that he couldn't do too much over here on the king side. Uh, king f6, pawn recapture, or pawn takes, pawn pushes forward g7, rook over here g4, pawn takes, rook down here g1, rook d3 check, and then we see rook e3 check, king d7, rook up here e5. And then the rook captures here on g7. There's just no way to stop the pawn pushing forward anymore. So Levante Ronin decides to go ahead and take right here. Vishyanan uh, decides I can go ahead and take here. That's fine as well. But uh, just to add salt to the wound, I'm not even going to take your rook. I'm going to play rook here to uh, d4 check. And then after this, he can decide to go ahead and take. But Levon Aronian had had enough. He decides to go ahead in this position to go ahead and resign. So congratulations to Vishyanan. He is now tied for first in the tournament. I just really did not expect him to play so well. Uh, but we've said it before, he prepares better than anyone for a tournament. It definitely seemed like he had a game plan where caught his opponent off guard. Not sure if he had kind of a scattering report on Levon Aronian that he just didn't know how to play certain lines in the Italian game, maybe as well as some of the other lines that he's seen him play. Uh, but he played this to perfection. Uh, I think he played one of the best end games I've seen in a while. Definitely a double rook end game. Uh, he just played it perfectly, calculated everything perfectly. Uh, Levon Aronian, I don't think he made any massive mistakes. I just think overall uh, he had slight moves here and there that maybe could have been improved. I don't know if he always knew the best place for that he should have been going uh, to defend correctly. I never felt like he had an attack where Vishyanan was under any sort of threat. Uh, and in the end, that kind of cost him. I know he was trying to hold on for a draw as long as possible. So he has kind of dipped back a little bit. He did not gain any points. So he's now half a point behind. Uh, he and Vishyanan kind of just switched places in the standings. Uh, so again, congratulations, Vishyanan. We do have a off day tomorrow for... So round 10 will start again back up in two days. But thank you for everyone for watching uh, the coverage so far. We do have five rounds left, so a lot of chess still to be played. Uh, but thank you again, and I'll see you guys in the next round.